Hey, it's Bill, and you're tuned to the Pennsylvania Rock Show, featuring the best unsigned rock and metal that Pennsylvania has to offer right here on PARockShow.com, MegaRockRadio.net, BuildTheScene.com slash radio, RudaRooRadio.com, AltRockRadio.ca, and XRPRadio.co.uk. This is episode number 506, and with me tonight is Patrick McElravey from the band Nine Stitch Method. What's up, Patrick? How's it going, brother? Everything good over there? Yeah, for the most part. <laughs> Coronavirus, pull the paper. Yeah. <laughs> um, th- thanks for jumping in for me and save- saving this week. Oh, not a problem, dude. It's always a good time spending the evening with you. <laughs> I was, I was, I greatly appreciated the call last night. So, we're trying something new. We're actually live on Facebook right now. Um, no one has joined us yet, but <laughs> we'll see what happens. Um, and here's my first moment of taking a sidetrack. <laughs> um, anyway, so the, the timing is actually pretty good for you, right? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, to, tomorrow, um, Five o'clock, we'll be dropping a new single off our upcoming EP we've been working on, uh, titled Obsolence. Uh, that'll be, yeah, like I said, that'll be going live on Facebook around five o'clock. That'll be uh, just exclusively on Facebook and on YouTube for now until the EP drops. And it'll be, then the entire thing will be on all digital platforms Spotify, iTunes, Deezer, whatever the kids are into nowadays. Buildthescene.com. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Can't forget that. Can't forget that. <clears throat> so, so I don't think we really covered the last time you were on how how you guys record your your music since there's just the two of you and there's clearly more than that going on when you're up on stage. How, how do you guys handle that? Um, it's actually pretty interesting. Uh, both both uh, the Yeti and I are uh, guitar players. So we each kind of we throw our own towels into the mix uh, with riffs and different ideas and stuff, and we go on because obviously it's just the two of us. Neither of us play drums. Neither of us know how to uh, program drums either. So we go on YouTube and we find like different beats and stuff like that, and uh, we kind of splice everything together how we want, just to sort of get a structure. Hey, I'm, um, hold on a second, Patrick. <laughs> Uh, the Skype recorder stopped working. <laughs> oh no! At least it was early on. So do we have to start from the top, or? Yeah, that's okay. That's all right. All right there it is. It's recording again. Hey, you're listening to the Pennsylvania Rock Show, featuring best unsigned rock and metal the Pennsylvania has to offer. Right here on parockshow.com, mega rock radio dot net, radio. Dot com build scene.com slash radio xrp dot so let me try that again xrp radio <laughs> dot co dot uk and <clears throat> alt rock radio dot ca this is episode number 506 of the pennsylvania rock show with me tonight is patrick McElravey of nine stitch method what's up patrick oh not too too much buddy just uh Getting ready to do a little radio interview over here. Been looking forward to it all day. <laughs> Take two. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. They say a the second time is better anyway. So so for those of you that, that are tuned in on Facebook right now, this is our first attempt at doing one of these live um, since about 2010. <laughs> So you're not going to actually get to hear any music on this. You'll have to go to the website and listen to the full episode to hear music, including a new track from Nine Stitch Method. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, sir. Uh, we, oh man, well, we actually just released our album, uh, Jay Walking Somnambulist, not too long ago. Uh, that would have been late September, end of October. Um, been playing shows off of that. It's been good. But the uh, Yeti and I were both Stone Cold songwriters. We're always at it. And the Yeti actually come to me and he was like, dude, I got a really good idea. Like, let's do in 2020 two EPs. Let's do a two parter. Uh, the first half would just be super heavy, super aggressive. And then the second half be more melodic, more, you know, a little not necessarily softer, but 
let melody and more clean vocals take the rain. So that's what we did. We got together. We banged out an EP. Uh, tomorrow we'll be dropping the single Obsolence off of the upcoming EP. Mm-hmm. And then uh, we'll be dropping it, I believe, May May 2nd, I think, is when we're going to release the EP. Is that your phone making that noise? <laughs> uh, yes, people. Notifications coming in right now. <laughs> <laughs> Is it buzzing? Yeah, it buzzed a little bit. No big deal. Yeah, me. <laughs> so I don't know if Patrick is actually tuned in, but right over my shoulder is the nine stitch method. Um, I guess other hand. <laughs> I can't point to it. There, there's the logo. <laughs> it's there, and behind me is a bunch of jewelry, but we won't get into that. <laughs> so. Um, how, how can people find you online? Oh, we are on Facebook. Um, that's primarily where you can find us. We don't have Instagram yet and really need to get on that, but we don't have it yet. But, uh, Facebook mainly, uh, we have all, all of our stuff is on every major platform right now. You got Spotify, iTunes, uh, YouTube, Bandcamp, uh, Deezer, title the the list goes on and on but it's it's all on there as of right now you can find it and of course we have uh merch and cds and stuff it shows as well that they can buy um you mentioned your your other ep i'm assuming that, that that's part of your merch but um what can you tell me about the recording of that the the ep it's coming up well it, both of them like like uh, it, we, i mean i we pretty I, much Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, I'm pretty sure that it's probably different than most people's process since there's just the two of you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we pretty much did everything the same this time around as we did with the album. Uh, but it was a little bit different. It, it, it's going to be a little bit better of a product because we're used to working with Gus Moore, vice versa. He's used to working with us. Um, he was able to do some things to polish up everything a little bit more. Uh, we do things backwards. Um, so how we kind of do things is both Josh and I, we're guitar players. Uh, you know, we each got ideas and stuff that we bring to the table. And neither of us know how to program drums. So what we do is we just go on YouTube and we find like different drum beats and stuff and we splice them all together just to kind of get a structure. Uh, you know, then we record our guitars. And most of the time I just go ahead and do my vocals as well uh, just because I'm pretty quick and snappy at it. Uh, and then we ship everything down to Gus Wallner, who's our producer. Um, he runs the channel You Think Music. Uh, he's actually based out of Brazil. So we ship our guitars and our vocals down to him. Uh, we show him how to play the songs. He programs the drums on the album. He learns the songs that we write on guitar and he writes and performs the bass and he mixes and masters everything. And he makes our, makes our crap sound pretty good. At least I'd like to think so. The dude's a madman. One of the, seriously, one of the nicest dudes and easiest dudes to ever work with. So I, I think I asked you this on um, three questions in a song, but, how do you make it through a set running around like that? Um, I die. <laughs> I die one song at a time. It's uh, I, it's just, it's funny. I was actually talking to Joel from Paradigm not too long ago, and he brought up a really good point because he'll be out on the road or whatever, and they'll have a show going up, and he'll just kind of go over, you know, footage and stuff people get from shows just to see if there's stuff he can fix, and he's just like, dude. Like watching videos, like it seems like it's not really that big an issue, but like, holy crap, is it physically exhausting up there? Which I couldn't agree more. It's just one of them things, just the first note starts playing. I just go ape. I can't help it. But I'm, I'm a chain smoker and a half, so that doesn't help my case. By like the third song in, my tank's emptied, and I'm just praying to God that I can finish out the rest of the set. <laughs> <laughs> I know when, when I was at the um, EP release trying to, to take photos of you and, and still learning how to use the camera, I had to turn off the autofocus because it couldn't focus on you. 
<laughs> yeah, this is very. I did it to everybody. Um, one of the photographers. We we just got done playing a <clears throat> horror realm con uh, this past weekend. It was a. It was down in South Pittsburgh, down toward Washington, and we had one of our friends who was doing photography there that night. She's like, "You don't hold still long enough for me to get a good shot." I'm like, "I know." Tell that to every other <laughs> photographer out there. <laughs> I just, I just can't. Well, that, that's the thing. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna go off onto like I, I hate stages. I love an open floor, like where I can just go out into the yard. You know what I mean? It's just people crowd around, you know, and where where I have room to move. And if I have that, just uh, I can't stay still. I just mm, gotta. Uh, uh, if there's energy in the room, good lord. Good Lord, our, our rest in peace, any photographer that night. That's all I got to say. <laughs> Even the Yeti's starting to move around too, which is nice. It makes me not have to work as hard. <laughs> like that <laughs> takes a load off my shoulders. Uh, you probably need to switch to wireless. <laughs> well, he, he uses a wireless unit now. Um, we uh, That's actually something I do plan on investing. We, we're, uh, we've been doing shows at a Double Deal and Cafe. Uh, with the East Coast Crazies out of Elwood City, we've been booking shows there. And Paul, the owner there, if you ever, it's it's a little dive bar, but Paul, the owner there, he's a musician, he's a good dude. Uh, the bar is nothing but good vibes and good times. He, he trusts us and East Coast Crazies enough. He pretty much just lets us do whatever he want we want there. And that uh, Steve just got from the East Coast Crazies just got a wireless unit, so we're gonna start using that there, and that'll be nice. But yeah, it's we've been booking shows out of there. It's been a good time. Uh, and a wireless unit just to run around that place. Oh my gosh, that would be amazing. <laughs> I just, I imagine that you get tangled up a lot. <laughs> yes, I do. Well, actually, there was a running joke that the reason why Steve and Fred bought the wireless unit was because we play shows so much together. And that, we're, you know, because, you know, we live, you know, we're close to one another and we're on the same label together. They got the wireless unit in lieu of, fear of me strangling myself and getting tangled up in the cord and whatnot. <laughs> so that's originally why they got it. <laughs> so, so we need to get a wireless unit so Pat doesn't kill himself. <laughs> well, I, I can definitely understand that. <laughs> if, yeah. if you are uh, listening to us live on Facebook right now and you want to ask Patrick a question, go ahead and type it in the comments and, uh, if it's appropriate enough, I'll ask it. <laughs> we have we have a few people listening right now. If you want to say hello. That's cool. Hello, everybody. I can't see who you are, but welcome. Uh hope hope you guys are having a good night. Hope you guys are all stocked up on toilet paper and enjoying the good weather. Now that the weather's finally breaking. Good lord. It's about time. <laughs> um so tell Tell me a little bit about the new track that's being released. The new track. Um, Cause I know you mentioned it's, it's not as heavy as the, the other EP. No, 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 no. This EP is going to be this, this EP will be, this will be the this heavier is probably going to be. Yeah, this is, yeah. The later on in the year, probably around November, we'll be dropping the second part to the EP. Uh, this is by far some of the heaviest, and most intense I think we've been thus far. Um, the new track, it's kind of cool. Um, it has uh, it has some cool melodic components to it, despite being heavy, but it's just really intense and in your face. Uh, really dug down deep this time around. I mean, I always do, but just dug deep and just really, you know, used it for catharsis. Uh, just laid it all out on the line. Uh I don't know. It's just one of them things. You got to hear it. I, I, I hope people listen and they're just like, holy crap. Like he was really, really feeling it when he recorded this, tra this track. That's my main thing as an artist. Like I want people to be able to tell that like, wow, like I really feel what he was trying to get across. And I'm hoping lyrically, like I, I try to write from a point of view where like I have to say what I need to say to get off my chest, but people can take different things from it. And you know what I mean? The, you know, the, it's not just my vision. They can interpret it differently and apply it to however they need to, or however they see fit. If that makes any sense. 
It does. I hear that all the time. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we did. Um, yeah, we did some pretty cool guitar stuff this time around. Uh, low uh, low tunings. We got to play with them a little bit more. That was pretty cool. Uh, Gus was a little bit more used to mixing and mastering our stuff that we send him this time around. He was able to add, he added a little bit more of his own influence with keyboards and stuff like that. And did some really cool, like slap bass and stuff like that. Just, I think it turned out really cool. I think it sounds like non-stitch method, but I think it's just a further expansion of what we've been doing all along. Um, how did you hook up with, with, with Brazil? Brazil. Yeah. It's actually pretty Facebook, actually. Uh, I think I was going through Facebook and I was just trying to get into all these different kind of community pages and stuff. Um, and this one called New Metal Forever. And I was always posting nine stitch stuff in there and Gus was always posting his stuff and him and I. You know, it was pretty obvious very early on that we shared a lot of the same interests. And at the time which he still does, but he was just posting his instrumentals uh, onto YouTube. And I was like, dude, like these are some really cool tracks. Like, is there any way I can take a stab at writing and recording some vocals for these? And he said, yeah, go ahead and show me what, you know, some of your material you have recorded. And I did. And it was just kind of like a match made in heaven, dude. Uh, outside of his work with nine stitch method, him and I worked together on the side writing and recording tracks and stuff as well. <laughs> But that's technology and the internet for you, dude. <clears throat> Brazil, Brazil, all the way up to Pennsylvania, baby. <laughs> I am. Um, I'm actually going to be um, recording an episode of Three Questions in a Song tomorrow night um, with an artist who's from Puerto Rico. Said, oh, really? Yeah, I, I don't think they're actually in Puerto Rico right now, um, but but they are from there. Um, I think he said he's out of the country right now, so. Should be interesting because I also read today that the National Guard is now controlling the airports in Puerto Rico and and holding a, uh, um, you know, enforcing the the travel bans. <laughs> yeah, due to the pandemic. Yeah, yeah. Dude, it is crazy times we're living in now. I mean, not only obviously with the pandemic, but just the way technology and everything is nowadays, dude. It's crazy. Like I said, I've never met the man you know, face to face, you know, we've Skype called a couple times, but I mean, it's amazing that we can do this stuff up here and just ship it over via email. And he does his thing down there and boom, we have a product, you know, same thing with you doing the podcast with those guys tomorrow. You know, it's amazing. Yep. So I'm actually sitting pretty much in the spot that all the live original live Pennsylvania rock shows happened from, um, Starting back in 2004. It's kind of weird. <laughs> oh, you're, you're in the living room. You're in the living room on the couch, ain't you? I am not. I am sitting over um, catty corner to the couch. Um, you'll have to watch the video. The couch is actually... Uh, <laughs> stupid camera. The couch is that way. <laughs> I just stepped outside. If there's too much noise, let me know. I'll go back. And... No, you're, I think you're okay. Okay. Anyway, go ahead. Then. So you're in the so you're in the original spot, the EOG spot. I am. I'm just facing a different direction than I used to. <laughs> I used to face. Here we go with the camera again. I used to face over there. <laughs> now I now officially understand my why my wife has been having trouble doing her lives with my cameras. It's because everything's the opposite direction when you're looking at it on the laptop. <laughs> I I pointed I left. Had- I pointed left and on the screen it went right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell her I said that though. <laughs> we'll sneak it in there. We'll use it as blackmail down the line. <laughs> but um so how about we'll we'll take a short break and we will listen to Obsolence by Nine Stitch Method and we'll be right back. And uh that only applies for those of you that aren't listening to the Facebook Live. I uh, am going to make a note in my mental mind of where that cutoff is. Patrick, 15,500 kilobytes. Remind me. <laughs> 15,000. I'll just remember 15,000. Okay. So 
You just heard Obsolence by Nine Stitch Method and some other track that I don't currently know. <laughs> so you'll just have to figure it out when when we do the show notes. <laughs> I can't be completely ready to go, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. Dude, we do this flying by the seat of our pants. That's the only way to go. All- who's, who, who's ever 100% ready? So is there a car driving past you right now? Yes, there is. Yeah. <laughs> that was definitely loud. <laughs> I'll tell you what, let me just go back inside because traffic's pretty heavy on this road. That'll be easier for you. Save your ears. I know you got headphones on. All righty, let's try that, buddy. How's that for you? All right, here, let's just do that again. That was Obsolence by Nine Stitch Method that you just heard, and one other track that I clearly don't know because. That would require me to be prepared. But you did hear two songs. <laughs> this is episode number 506 of the Pennsylvania Rock Show. And uh, we are actually live on Facebook um, Thursday night. And the show will be released on Friday. So you'll be able to hear the difference between what actually happens on a call, an interview, and what you actually get to hear as the finished project pro- yeah, project with, with all the music included. So... For those of you that have never been on the show, it's a lot different. <laughs> Which, by the way, congratulations on making that list for the top podcast. That's pretty awesome, Bill. <laughs> I I probably wasn't even going to mention that. So, um, there's... well, I'm mentioning. I'm your friend, and I'm proud of you. That's awesome. Thank you. So it's it was the top twenty rock podcasts that you should check out in 2020, and uh, we made number sixteen. And uh, one of my favorite podcasts, which is also from Cannonsburg, Pennsylvania, the Ludini Rock Rock and Roll Circus was number eight. And uh, the two of us were pretty excited to see that we were on the same list as Eddie Trunk from that metal show. That's awesome, dude. Did you notice he was on there? Yes, I did. He's on all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Moving up in the world, baby. Keep running. Keep that nose to the grindstone. Yeah, I was I was excited when I saw that. Um, I don't think Lou saw that I was on the list when he posted it, and he was tagging all his his normal followers. And I looked at it and I was scrolling down. I was like, "Whoa, wait, what?" <laughs> <laughs> I'm in this too. Yes, I'm a contender. <laughs> um, if you have not checked out Lou's podcast, you should definitely do that. Listen to he, he and Louie V. Louie, Lily V6 on uh, Rock Rage Radio. Hot Licks with Lily 6. Yes, she's on, I think, Thursdays at 6. Yep, Thursdays, 6 to 8. And I can honestly not tell you what time the Ludini show is on because I watch it live on Facebook when they're recording like we're doing tonight. (laughs) That's Yeah, that's how I always end up watching it. I I never end up tuning in. Uh, like on the station, I, yeah, I always end up watching it live whenever I tune in for that as well. But it's it's an awesome show. I believe next week's topic is Kiss. Oh, here, hold on a second. Hey, hey, what's up? <laughs> I love you. <laughs> okay, go upstairs. See, that's the kind of stuff you don't hear in the finished project. <laughs> <laughs> What's a podcast? <laughs> I'll tell you later. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, so that that'll be cut in tomorrow's finalized version, but you guys got to hear it tonight. I can't believe that there are definitely people listening and no one has asked Patrick a question yet other than me. I'm opening it up. The form is yours. Type it in the comments. <laughs> huh. <laughs> see, I should be able to go in here and see this one. Just make sure you mute whatever you're using because it'll feed back through. Um, All right. I believe I already did that. I am wearing blue, so when you tune in, you're going to see all my blue logos at the bottom that you can't really see. Because they're blending into my shirt. <laughs> oh, that looks awesome, dude. 
And uh, so I, I, my parents bought me a um, SJ4000 camera for Christmas. And my plan is to use it for things like we're doing tonight. And I had planned on taking it to a band practice and, and trying it out there. But something tells me that that kind of stuff is going to be put on hold for a little while. <laughs> what makes you say that? Um, oh, yeah. Coronavirus. And everything. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, definitely, dude. But um, it's the maiden voyage of the camera was um, last week when my wife was going live for her jewelry sales. That, that hand didn't show up. Neither hand showed up. I don't know. Back here behind me. <laughs> you can see some jewelry back there. Um, a lot of a lot more people just jumped on. That's awesome. Again, if anyone out there that's listening would like to ask Patrick a question, type it in the comments. Um, is Yeti listening? Does he know this is going on? I don't know. The Yeti is in the process of uh, moving right now. So that was kind of – he was originally going to be a part of this tonight. I was actually supposed to take boxes up to him tonight, but we've been kind of having – the plague go through our house, so I just opted to stay home and not spread the disease at all. Yeah, it's, he he might be tuning in. I don't know. I don't know. He's not much of a Facebook person anyway. He kind of stays under. He stays in his cave up in the mountain. He's, he doesn't come out too much. He's is he from Pennsylvania? Oh yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah, okay. he's um, he's he's actually uh about an hour north of me, up toward the Hermitage. He's by the Ohio line, kind of. <laughs> we went to, uh, it would have been like two weeks ago. We had band practice. He needed guitar strings. He doesn't drive, so I was like, "Where's the closest guitar shop?" And he said Hubbard Music. So I looked it up on Google, and I was like, "All right, like, it says it closes at eight. I called the shop just to make sure they were open." And so I had them, they said they had one set of uh, seven string guitar strings left. So I'm like, all right. So they put it aside for us. And the music shop that he wanted to go to was only like 15 minutes away from his house. We ended up driving like over a half hour into Ohio into Niles. At the, we ended up at the Eastwood Mall, which that was pretty fun. Just a little unexpected adventure or whatever. He's just like, we should have been there by now. And I'm like, I don't know, dude. I'm just following the GPS. <laughs> <laughs> we ended up, yeah, we ended up like 45 minutes into Ohio. Finally got the guitar strings, and then we walked out and went back home and called it a night. <sighs> Did they have more than one set? Was it a, I'm no, assuming no, it wasn't. No. Well, we, we got there. I, I had forgotten that the kid had pulled it off the shelf. So we got there and we're looking. There's no seven string guitar sets there. We're just like, crap, dude. We just made this trip for nothing. And I went over to the counter and I was like, Do you guys happen to have any more of these? And he said, Are you the guy I called a little bit ago? I said, Yeah. He said, He pulled them up. I'm like, My man. He said, I got you. Don't worry. <laughs> so that was, thank God. Whew. That would have been a heartbreaker. 45 minute drive for no guitar strings. Ugh. So do you guys have any shows scheduled that are still taking place? Uh, yes, um, we have, uh, let me think here, let me think here, let me think here. We have Basement Transmissions, April 3rd. We open up for Stitched Up Heart, Tuesday, April 28th with Over My Dead Body. Um, oh, the 25th of April, we have Versus Fest which that should be pretty interesting. Um, May 2nd, we have Night of the Drumless with the East Coast Crazies at Double Dealing. Uh, we have some summer shows, but I can't remember them off the top of my head. I know we're going back to Crowtown, Ohio at some point. Um, we're playing the Royal Barbecue. It's at some... It's hosted by Sean from uh, Prime 8. I think that's in August. And I think that's all we got for now. The calendar will continue to fill out as it always does, but got a bunch of shows coming up here. It's going to be pretty busy pretty quick. Do you keep your events pretty updated on the Facebook page? I try to. Um, it all depends on whether I'm on day shift or night shift. If I'm on night shift, everything gets by me. I don't do crap. 
uh, the one day shift probably will be updated. Uh, we try not to like, I mean, you're supposed to push and push and promote and promote. We try not to bomb people too much until it's like three weeks out from a show just because people have short attention span. And if you start bugging them too early on, they're going to get, uh, you know what I mean? Sick of seeing it. And hold on. I got to go call them a fire upstairs. I'll be right back. Okay. Whoop. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Patrick just dropped his phone. Um, so while he's running upstairs, um, I'll throw some of my website addresses out at you for you to check. Uh, two of them are scrolling across the bottom of the screen, parockshow.com, which is this. Uh, buildthescene.com, which is um, the place to go for Pittsburgh music. Um, if you go to 3qs.buildthescene.com, that'll take you to the podcast your scene page for Three Questions in a Song, which is my other podcast. Uh, I mentioned a band from Puerto Rico earlier. Um, that band is called Notion, which is Spanish for Notion. Um, you can listen to that episode on uh, the 15th, which is coming up pretty directly since it's the 12th while I'm recording this live on Facebook, and it'll be the 13th when it's released on all of the radio stations. You make sure you go to buildthescene.com slash radio tomorrow night at 8 p.m. to hear the first playing of the show. Um, and 6 a.m. tomorrow, hopefully, as long as I get it edited tonight, will be when this episode pops up on parockshow.com. <laughs> the joy of children. Sorry about that, Bill. <laughs> That's okay. I kicked my three out of the living room. They're playing Uno with, with, with their mom. <laughs> Uno, yeah. Uno flip, whatever that is. The five-year-old's good. It's the three-year-old that gives me the trouble. <laughs> <laughs> well, imagine if you would. <laughs> Six years ago, I had a five-year-old and two three-year-olds. <laughs> uh, you are a saint. I couldn't imagine more than two. Well, you know, there were two pregnancies. Just three kids showed up. <laughs> Did I confuse you? <laughs> no, I lost. You there? I am. What happened there? There we go. <laughs> I do not know. <laughs> Let me make sure it's still, it says it's recording us. And that okay. dis, that disappeared. Hold on. <laughs> oh, no. It still says it's recording us. Um, what I said right before it beeped over top of me was um, there were two pregnancies and three kids. They just decided to show up that way. <laughs> two pregnancies and three kids. Yes. Oh, that sounds like a lot of stress and high blood pressure <laughs> right there, my friend. Well, in, in the beginning, it was a lot of no sleep. <laughs> yeah. My friend, it is always no sleep. Well, yeah, you have a kid who just turned two, and you have two newborn babies that are not oh, yeah. on the same oh, yeah. time schedule. <laughs> now, so, okay, now let me ask you this. How long did it take your kids to flip over to a normal time sleep schedule? Um, Do you want me to lie to you? <laughs> no. No, 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 no. Because here's the thing. My daughter, our, our, our first, our daughter, she was like textbook. We brought her home and within the week. She was, she had a, you know, she slept all night for the most part, you know, would wake up every couple hours maybe for a feeding. But she slept pretty good all night and, you know, she stayed up all day for the most part. My son, good Lord, <laughs> that child put us through our paces. Holy crap. Well, see, Aid Aiden was really good. He was, he was the firstborn. Um, he was pretty good, but um, the problem is I can't really answer the question with the twins because when you wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning, the screaming baby, you pick up the one that's screaming and you don't necessarily turn on the lights. <laughs> <laughs> so so I don't know. <laughs> that's, that's fair, though. That's fair. You know, and that one falls asleep and you fall asleep for five minutes and the other one starts screaming. <laughs> But, um, do your kids like your music? I am extremely blessed in that department. They do. They love it. When we're in the car, now you got to understand too. So it all depends on who's in the car. If mommy is in the car, mama will put on the Pandora. She'll put on the Disney tunes, you know, and they'll rock out to them. But if it's just me in the car, those daddy can you put on your rock star music can you put on and what's even better 
is like I'll be flipping through my phone and stuff, and as soon as it's one of mine and Josh's songs, they recognize it and they know it. Oh, that's Daddy. That's you and Uncle Josh. And I'm like, you're darn right. That's Daddy and Uncle Josh. And they just rock, you know, they rock out and stuff. It's dude, it's so awesome. They're not old enough to know that I'm weird yet. <laughs> <laughs> they think I'm the, they think I'm the man, which is awesome. I'll I'll eat it up as long as I can. I I am watching myself in this video, going, do I really do that all the time? I'm shaking my head in response to you talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, did, like, I, I didn't know I did that. <laughs> <laughs> well, like another thing that was cool too, um, when we lived in Butler, there was a, uh, there wasn't, well, let me think here. Was it Lorelai? No, it wasn't Lorelai. It was Jackson. When Jackson was first born, he, like I said, he, he stayed up all night. He slept all day. Uh, how I stayed up with him was I would sit at my desk when I was learning how to record vocals and do production and stuff on that, I would just put him in his car seat and I would sing and do vocals and mess around on the computer while I'd rock him in his car seat. And that's how he would go to sleep at night for me, <laughs> which that's, you know, and now he grabs my microphones and stuff and he runs around the house and he goes, rawr, 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 and I'm like, yeah, get it, son, get it. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, my, my most recent music story is the, the, um, uh, let me try that again. The Foo Fighters came on on the radio, and my daughter told me this music is garbage. Turn it off. The oh, Foo oh. Fighters. The Foo Fighters. <laughs> <laughs> How can you hate on the Foo Fighters, though? Oh, my gosh. So then, so then I tried to explain to them that they're probably the best rock band that plays currently, the major band. They have a huge following. My wife gets in the car, and I try and tell her what I just told you, and she's like, yeah, I wouldn't call them the best rock band. I don't know. Them are fighting words right there. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay, okay. Let's take it back, Bill. Let's take it back to last year. I can't remember what podcast it was, but wasn't it? You put you put on. We had just released "Ceiling" uh, as a single to build up for the album. You put it on your podcast. Didn't your daughter say it sounded like a bunch of monsters? Yes. <laughs> I remember I remember vividly you telling me actually it sounds like a bunch of monsters screaming into a microphone, Daddy. <laughs> yeah. They're they they are not really fans of what I listen to. Um, they like the Southern Rock stuff. You know, I'm all over the place. I listen to acoustic, I listen to Southern Rock, I listen to metal. Um basically if you tune into the Pennsylvania Rock Show, you're listening to what I like. Um to give you an idea of what I listen to. Um, and if you listen to three questions in a song, you get to hear some eclectic stuff that I like that you wouldn't hear on the Pennsylvania rock show, like folk punk and <laughs> yes, really folk punk and some country. Um, I'm trying to, trying to hook up with this guy in Australia. He's a um, rapper, but, um, it's hard to, to get him to answer. <laughs> well, there's, well, I'd imagine there's definitely a time difference. Oh yeah. <laughs> but all right, so. I think we're probably pretty good time wise for the show. Um, is there anything that you want to throw out there before I let you go for the evening? Uh, yeah, man. Um, yeah, obsolescence drops uh, tomorrow, uh, March thirteenth. So, if you're listening uh, to the podcast and not the live version, that is on Facebook right now. That's today. <laughs> let's see. Yeah, yeah, that'll be dropping today uh, via Facebook and YouTube. Um, We'll be announcing more details about the EP soon after. Uh, we will be up in Erie <clears throat> at Basement Transmissions with Feast on the Fallen, uh, Hatred Rising, 156 Silence. That's actually the first date of their t upcoming tour. And we'll be at the Hard Rock with uh, Over My Dead Body and Stitched Up Heart uh, at the end of April. So keep tabs on. we got a lot of cool stuff coming, new music. Uh, thanks for all the love and support as always, guys. Make sure you find them on Facebook. Is it Nine Stitch Method or is it Nine SM? Uh, Nine Stitch Method. Nine Stitch Method. Um, make sure you check us out each and every week on parockshow dot com. You can always go to buildthescene dot com and find out as much information as I know that's going on in the scene. Um, that picks up a little more in the summer while I'm not in class, but there's still some stuff on there that you could check out. Um, if you look, if if you're on the live video and you look down below. There's Build the Scene, AK Music Scene, First Angel Media, Three Questions and a Song, Pennsylvania Rock Show, and right up there is the Nine Stitch Method logo. <laughs> now, 
now all those people listening to the podcast will be like, what is he doing? (laughs) (laughs) Hey, so make sure you check us out next week. We are out of here. I'm going to play at least one more, maybe two more tracks from the best unsigned rock that Pennsylvania has to offer right here on parockshow.com. And um, we'll catch you later.